that could be an unpleasant thing, but how do you develop... Actually an evil thing. Let's, you, let's call it evil, only, Christopher. That's only a religious person would dream of saying. Let's call it evil. Where does evil come from? Religion. <laughs> And, mora- and to, are- answer, to answer your next question, morality comes from humanism and is stolen by religion for its own purposes. Humanism according to who? Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin, who? You're saying that Hitler was a humanist? Just Hitchens. <laughs> I've lived to hear it said. Hitchens. At, in Virginia. Hitler was a Catholic. A human. So, a H- human. Hitler was a Catholic. A so, Hitler was a Catholic. Give, so give, was Mussolini. Give me a... How... How does morality exist both if it's just a, my opinion against them, your opinion and there's no standard beyond? Both of them had an official political no concordat with the Protestant and Catholic churches. Both of them wanted the worship of themselves as well as of uh, God. So I suppose no evil comes and from atheism. Third, and their third main ally, uh, Hirohito, the emperor of Japan, not content just to be theocratic, was himself a god. So anyone who says that fascism and Nazism were secular is an ignoramus Why is it on wrong? a gigantic scale. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm asking an ontological question. I'm, I'm not, not going asking to be called a, a Hitlerite because I'm a humanist. Okay? I'm not asking a sociological question. All right. Let me ask a question another way. This is my last question. Um, if God does not exist, why do all people have a fixed moral obligation to love and not murder? How do molecules in motion have any authority to tell you how to behave? When you do something wrong, whose standard are you breaking? Who are you displeasing? The carbon atom, the benzene, benzene molecule, who? This question has been asked, uh, the, Socrates answered it like this, when he was on trial for his life. Uh, accused of blasphemy, by the way. Um, he said that he had an inner daemon, was the way he put it. Not demon, a daemon, a spirit, uh, an inner critic, a conscience would be one way of putting it. And that he, he knew enough to know, even when he was making the best speech of his life, that if he was making a point that was somehow dishonest or uh, incomplete or shady, the daemon would tell him, yeah, that was clever, but you shouldn't have tried it. He knew. Okay. Any, any person of average moral equipment has the same knowledge. I hope you'll... If you don't, I'm very sorry for you. Um, Adam Smith called it the, the internal witness, who we all have to have a conversation with all the time. Um, it's been C.S. Lewis decided to call it conscience and to attribute it to the, to the divine, but he didn't improve on what Adam Smith said in the theory of moral sentiments or what Socrates said when, on, when standing trial for his, own, for his own life. It's been sometimes colloquially defined as why do people behave well when nobody's looking? I don't believe there's anyone in this hall who doesn't know what I mean by that. Why, when it won't do you any good, Will you decide, I could have kept that wallet I found on the back of the cab seat, but I'm not going to. I'm going to turn it in. I'm going to see, find, the, find its real possessor. There are people to whom that, those thoughts do not occur, who are deaf to that idea, who only think of themselves, who wouldn't worry about the internal daemon or censor or, uh, or companion. And there are, of course, people who only get pleasure from being um, unpleasant to other people are inflicting cruelty on them. The first group we call the sociopathic, and the second group we call the psychopathic. My only, and they occur in nature and in society. My only problem is with those who think that they're all made in the image of God. The one explanation that absolutely doesn't work at all, that gets you nowhere, that explains nothing. Christopher, it's your turn to ask. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Well, my question is this. Would anyone in the audience like to join this conversation? We actually have... Uh... We have questions if you're ready to move along. Yeah, I, I am. There are um, a couple of questions, a lot of, several similar, similar questions that boil down to a couple of questions for each of you and then one that I'll end with that I think is an important one to address to uh, both of you. Since you gave your turn away, Mr. Hitchens, I'll ask you first. If uh, the, the uh, questioner asks, if God does not exist, what then is the purpose of life? Well... I can only answer for myself. What cheers me up? Um, I suppose mainly gloating over the misfortunes of other people. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that. And, and you say evil comes that, from religion. I, huh? guess that, I guess that has to be. I think, yeah, mainly 
crowing over the miseries of others. Um, it doesn't always work, but it never completely fails. And then, and then there's irony. There's irony, and which is the gin in the Campari, you know, the cream in the coffee. Um, sex can have diminishing returns, but it's amazing. <laughs> Uh, no, that's pretty much it. And then it's a clear run to the grave. <laughs> Dr. Turek. Yes, sir. Do, I, do you want me to answer that or not? <laughs> Somebody else. Okay. Uh, if Christianity is true, then why aren't the differences that Jesus makes in the lives of Christians more powerful or evident than the impact other religions make on their adherence. I don't know if I accept the premise of the question. Well, the, the, the questioner adds, Gandhi was every bit as influential as any Christian. Yeah, that's true, and that's one of the problems with Christianity. The biggest problem with Christianity is Christians. I admit it. But the question, uh, is, I, but the question is asking yeah. a, more, a more central question, which is, if this is the truth, yes. why then doesn't that truth, by the weight of its uh, infinite being, cause its adherents to behave in a way that we can all notice? Well, I think you can notice it in several Christians. I think Christians for years have been the ones that have built hospitals and cared for the poor and cared for the weak and the sick. So I think it does make a difference. My problem, which is part of the problem that the questioner is asking, is why doesn't it have this effect on everyone? And I'll throw a little Christian theology in here. The problem is, isn't that we don't have all the whole, or that we don't have all the Holy Spirit, we do, we just don't allow all the Holy Spirit to do what it should do. It's our problem. We are fallen human beings. And that's why Christ had to come, because we are fallen human beings. And has to come again, because he didn't get it right the first time. <laughs> I, agree, um, I agree with you that the grammar of the question is wrong. Um, but for a different reason. I don't see what's moral about Christian preaching. Uh, for example, apart from the horrible idea of vicarious redemption, but, uh, I mean, I'll say again, in case I missed you the first time, what I mean by that. I could pay your debt, even if I didn't know you. If I was a friend, I could say, you're in debt, I'll pay it. In extreme cases, people have been known to say, I'll serve your sentence in prison. I could do that for you. What I cannot do is relieve you of your responsibility. I can't say, throw your sins on me, they'll melt away. Immoral. People are not allowed to be. You're not entitled to be relieved of their responsibilities. And the vicarious redemption by human sacrifice is a very primitive and horrible scapegoating idea that belongs to the barbaric period of human history. So all pardons are immoral? So, I know, not all pardons. No, I didn't say that. I said vicarious redemption is an immoral doctrine. It's also immoral of the Nazarene to say, take no thought for the morrow, not to clothe, not to eat, not to invest, don't, don't leave your family, leave your children, leave everything, give up the world, no investment, no thrift, no thought for the future, just follow me. I That's only moral if, if, you are a sure believer in the idea that the world is about to come to an end, which was the case with this apocalyptic... I guess uh, you never prophet. read the parable so of the he talents, said, huh? He said, he said the, the, uh, the prophecy is that the world is coming to an end real soon. There's no point in caring about anything else. That's not a moral preaching to me at all. Um, there are many other ways in which I, I, I fail to see how any, any bad behavior can ever be described as... Unchristian, and of course, it's completely laughable to say Christians build hospitals. They just many Christians have bombed hospitals as, as have built them, and as many Muslims have built hospitals as Christians have, and as many uh, Babylonians have built great buildings as Christians have. If that's the best you can do, that's the best you can do. One of the uh, questioners repeats a, a point from Dr. Turek's uh, opening statement that uh, apparently here she feels you did not address, Mr. Hitchens. Oh about the irreducible complexity of DNA. And is it possible for such structures to have formed by chance? Well, there are two, I have two responses to that. One is, what would she have said before she knew about DNA? What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> they they existed prior to anyone knowing about them. Yes. It, right. Gravity existed before we knew about it, that's Christopher. Correct. You need an explanation that's for That's correct, that. and Christianity thought it could explain everything, and then it found no, more everything. things. Wait. It's a very simple, same as your point about molecules that I...